Man, we had so many good times. I was kind of hoping we could have some more. But, wait, what? Oh, oh, I see. Sober girl from a long time ago. Oh, wanted love, but she let me know. No, now my heart's broke. Now my heart's broke. Hey, you may not like me that way, but we can still be friends, right? Right? Wait, no, where are you going? Come back! <sighs> I guess I'll just keep going. Ah, and another thing, you don't have to call Shichan something so formal like Hakimichi or class rep all the time. Just call her Shichan. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's too casual. Maybe Shizune would be more appropriate. Isn't that casual too? That's like, that's first name. Yep, yep, Shizune is fine. Heh, okay, that would be a lot easier for me. I feel a lot more at ease. Both of them seem so friendly, so I feel like an idiot for being so apprehensive earlier. Especially about Shizune, who I assume would be all business. She look all business. Well, she still seems like that. <laughs> Just less so, I guess. Oh, uh, she caught wind. <laughs> Huh? Oh, right, we haven't even touched the assignment. We should start work now, or Shi-chan will get mad. The assignment is also kind of long, so we should start now if we want to finish it before the end of class. No. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Shizune glares at the two of us un impatiently. I don't need to know sign language to understand that. Okay, okay, I get the message. After class, we can take a walk around the grounds together. It's a nice day today, okay? The assignment is actually very challenging to get through, combining aspects of being both difficult, difficult and unnecessarily long. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I didn't mean to do that. Still, we finish it a few minutes earlier than anyone else in the class, despite our late start. Shizune and Misha are really capable. Ah, oh, man, I didn't mean to skip that. They're quite different, though the class rep is as calm and professional as she looks, while Misha is a lot more playful and girlish, not to mention a little more easily distracted. To be honest, the two of them did most of the work. I feel guilty about that. The clock terror bows, bows. Yes, the clock terror boss. The boss. The clock terror bows. The clock terror. The clock. T <laughs> ah! The clock terror bow bells. The bells ring, <laughs> signaling the end of the period. Time for lunch. Without knowing what else to do, I follow Misha, who was beckoning me into the hallway and down the stairs. We descend even below the lobby where I met Muto, down to the bottom floor. Just like everything in the school, the cafeteria seems too spacious and oddly modern in contrast to the classic interior. Exterior. Its big windows open to the courtyard, towards the main gate. It's the cafeteria! I forgot the Japanese word for cafeteria. Her enthusiastic statement of the obvious makes people around us stare, but Misha doesn't seem to care, so we proceed to the lawn. There's a rather long list of menu options, which seems great until I realize that many of them are to accommodate students who need special diets. How nice, it almost feels like I'm back at the hospital. Oh, he was saying this sarcastically. Eating portions measured with scientific precision to meet the needs of the patients. I pick something at random and follow Suzune to a table, sitting opposite of her. As I nibble indifferently at the food I'd rather not eat, Misha pokes me in the side to get my attention and points to Shizune. I don't understand science, so the point escapes me. Maybe looking at a person who talks to you is proper and polite? Do you want to know something? Nani. About anything. We're, our, we're your guide, so you should ask if there's... Hmm, I wonder. Nah. You don't ask a girl about her problems unless she wants to talk about them. <sighs> I, I felt something in my chest there for a minute. Uh, I think I got everything I need to know. Ask about the library. Oh yeah, is there a library in the school? Lately I've gotten into reading a lot, so I'd like to check it out. Misha gives the kind of frown that makes it clear she doesn't consider reading a healthy hobby, but then picks up her smile again. There is! It's in the second floor. We can show it to you sometime. Thanks. Arigato. I remember my food while the girls talk between themselves. Misha and Misha, I don't know why I'm saying Misha. Misha and Suzune sign back and forth very animate, animatedly. Gosh, I, get, I need to work on my vernacular. 
throwing sideway glances at me, but Misha refrains from translating. Maybe they are talking about secret girl stuff or something. I quickly notice the conversation in sign is not enough to fill the silence. We arrive in the classroom early, but we're not the first. The dark haired girl I noticed, noticed before slumped over her desk at the last row. She jumps a little when Misha crashes into the room with the elegance of a rhino. She shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her, ten her tension all the way from here, as if she were slowly turning into stone just from my presence. Misha and Suzune either don't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to this seats and begin to converse. I'm left wondering about her, even when the classroom slowly fills with other students and finally the teacher. Getting into the rhythm of school feels strange. It's as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. Towards the end of class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. I shouldn't be this tired on my first day of school. Maybe it's the long time spent in the hospital that made me feel like this. I'm even feeling physically weak and lifeless. Before long, the final bell rings. The school is finally over for the day. Beside me, Misha and Suzune are having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Come on. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't stay and show you around today, he chat. We've got to hurry already, since there's a lot of work for us to do. You'll find your way around here, I'm sure of it. Oh, wait, the teacher said. I have to see the nurse. Where do I have to go? Is that so? We can at least show you that much. Come on, the nurses have their own building, so we have to go outside. We join the flow of students making their way down the stairwell and outside with the girls pointing out other senior classrooms in the same hallway as ours. When we get outside, the girls make their way to the small, smaller building right next to the school. It's built in the same style, so it looks like it's actually part of the main building. This is the auxiliary building here. There's a lot of official and important stuff inside, like the Yamaku Foundation office and all the nurses' offices. They even have a swimming pool. How is that official? <laughs> Uh-oh. Don't be silly, he chan It's for physical therapy, of course. Anyway, all the nursing staff facilities are in there too. The head nurse's office is on the first floor. You'll be fine from here, right? We'll be going then. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Arigato. Sayonara. Or whatever. I think bye is like I won't see you for a while. A whole, uh, sayonara. Whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education? I guess it's necessary for a place like this. Duh. Why I gotta be you? Why you gotta be Baka-chan? That's what I'm gonna call you, he said. Baka-chan. I'll, I'll walk in. No, Baka-kun. Baka-kun. i walk in hoping that this really will be only a quick visit like the teacher said. On a white door on the left is a green cross with the text head nurse and a nameplate. A voice from the inside responds to my knock almost immediately, but I can't quite make it out. It sounded a bit like an invitation to open the door, so I invite myself further in. The room is not large and it smells strange. A friendly looking man turns around on his office chair to face me as I enter. His desk is neat and tidy, but the bin under the table is overflowing with used medical utensils and there are at least a dozen coffee cup rings lingering on the desk. Hello there. What can I do for you today? He is young looking and sort of rugged, but the dimples in his cheek wash that depression away when he smiles. This guy is rugged? Oh, this music though. Erm, are you the nurse? He smiles like a person who has heard this very same question hundreds of times. Yo, what a grin, dude. <laughs> Why, yes, I am. It says so on the door, no? You can call me by my name or just the nurse like everyone else. Of course. I shake off my confusion realizing I probably should just... should I probably should grab his extended hand. His handshake is rather firm and friendly. Right, er. Uh, I had to stop at that sex. Uh, 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 u
Oh, you're that Nakai. Konoa. Kono Nakai. I was just reading your file in the morning. Some kind of chronic arrhythmia and related congenial heart muscle deficiency, right? He gestures me to sit down in a vacant armchair in front of his de desk. Thing. Ah, eh, yes. Good. Well, you've probably been briefed about the school enough, so I'll just go over this quickly. We have all kinds of facilities available, mostly physical therapy and such. There's always someone from my staff around, even at night, so never hesitate to call us if there is a problem. The famous 24-hour staff nursing staff. Wow, this is like a hospital. Well, not exactly. For instance, we don't do brain surgery here. <laughs> His jokes feel so out of place that I'm left thinking why he even said it. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, just that it's really weird to have so many medical people at a school. You'll get used to it. I'm not so sure of that myself, but I don't let the nurse know it. Now, let me just find your file again. While he searches for something from his computer and shuffles stacks of paper around, I let my gaze wander around the room. It's the epitome of generic, I like to say. <laughs> beige wall- beige? I think you pronounce that beige. Beige walls and ceiling. Dark gray laminate flooring and all the equipment you would expect from a school nurse's office. Even the ridiculous edu educational <laughs> Even the ridiculous educational posters are hanging on all four walls, reminding me to eat properly three times a day and from all the food groups. Smiling, the nurse draws a thick file from a stack of similarly thick files and opens it. So, you already have medication for the arrhythmia. Just remember to take your pills every morning and evening or it won't be much help. Apart from that, do you do any sports? Rash stuff like, I don't know, boxing? Did you not know? Muhammad Ali, sir. I'm, I am Mike Tyson. I mean, oh crap, no, oh gosh, don't copyright me. I meant Mike Bison. M. Bison. Wait, no, that's Japanese. I'm, I'm Balrog. Oh. Let's just keep going. He grins at his own joke, but I don't... Eh, well, I played soccer occasionally with some classmates. Alright, I'm afraid I'm going to have to recommend you refrain from doing that, at least for the time being. Oh, my lack of reaction makes him ri raise an eyebrow, but really, I'm not too bothered by him forbidding me to kick a ball around. I guess I never did it out of burning passion for the sport, just to have something to do. Any kind of concussion might be very dangerous to your heart, and risking another attack is not a good idea. Was the previous one caused by a sudden concussion to the chest area? There is no mention of the cause in your paper. Err, not exactly. I sidestep the question acceptingly, and he glances at me over his papers, with a more serious ex expression on his face. Still, you need to keep your body healthy so some exercise would do you good. We have physical therapy and such available as I said, but I don't think you really need such heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. regularly. Brisk walks, or even light jogging, jump roping, jumping, jumping rope, <laughs> that sort of thing. Swimming, maybe? There's a pool here. So I was told. You were? Very good. At any rate, I'm sure you've been told this before. You just need to take care not to overexert yourself. He wags his finger to emphasize the point. No need, really. I've heard this a thousand times already. Absolutely no. Unnecessary risk. Take care of yourself. Okay. He goes over my papers one more time and tests them on the desk, obviously content. Good, that's it then. Come meet me if you ever need something. I'm ushered out before I even realize it. A quick visit indeed. I end up standing in front of the main building, in the auxiliary building, although to my eyes, they still look one and the same. It's the first real look I get at the other students, so I watch people coming out of the school, going towards the gate or the dorms. Everyone seems to know where they are going. And I still keep thinking that most of them don't look too special for being students at a special school. Then again, neither do I. Does that make me one of them? One of us? I should go somewhere too, to prevent me from getting lost. It's around dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. The weariness in me only grows as I trudge towards the dorm. Dorms, set a little way apart from the main building complex. There's a garden of sorts between the school and the dorm, shrubbery, shrubbery, flowers and that overbearing smell of fresh cut grass that fills the atmosphere. It really is a beautiful campus. State ain't got nothing on 
I'm sorry, State. I love you, State. <laughs> it dawns on my tired mind that the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside at all for so long. The dorm building is big and made of red brick. Like the others, it feels way too pompous for what it is, so I push forward going inside. That drawing on the out there, right there. It takes more time than necessary to fish out the key I was given from my pocket. Room 119. <laughs> is that supposed to be a 911 joke? It's not funny. It's not funny at all. I caught it though. You're not clever, dear translators. Despite the ornate exterior, the inside of the dorm is fairly new, functional, and boring. <laughs> Just like in the main building, the halls and doors are wide to accommodate wheelchairs. The same goes for the elevators at the end of the hallways. I poke my head around the corner of the common room door. Inside, a few students are watching the television. Watching the telly. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back to the TV. Seems that the only girls around here are sociable. I suppose that's perfectly fine with me. I climb the stairs to the upper floor. Here, small, small corridors branch off from the main hallway. Each of these minor halls seems to have a toilet and a shower as well as four rooms. About halfway down the hall, I spy room 119. The name plates on the rooms adjacent to mine are blank. I guess there are just two of us here. Light shines from below the door of room 117, so I knock lightly. Actually, now that I think about it, wasn't 119 the call number for uh, emergency in Japan? It's, it's something like that. I forget. And it's also specific to specific areas, I believe. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Hello? Is anyone home? Do you say, Tadaima? Tadaima? I think. Uh, from inside, I hear a few movements, then the clicking of way more locks than I thought these doors had. After a moment, the door squeaks open. Oh man, it's by Shonen Dude! We're finally getting into this playthrough. A respectable boy is standing in the doorway. He is looking at me very intently through his extremely thick eyeglasses. Who is it? <laughs> Uh, blind? No, at least not completely. Why would he have eyeglasses if he was? He leans closer to me until our, until our noses are almost touching. His breath stinks of garlic. Uh, Hisa Naka. Nakai. And moving into the next room, I thought I should introduce my... His face suddenly brightens in realization and he stands back upright, thrusting his hand out in a smiling greeting, almost straight to my diaphragm. Oh, sup dude? My name, the name's Kenji. Ah, hi. I take Kenji's sweetie hand and shake it. It's still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and vehement welcome. Uh, there were some suspicious looking people going in and out of your room earlier. It is probably my parents. Your parents? You sure? Because they could have been some other people too. You can't judge a book by its cover. His out of place proverb is left hanging between us awkwardly as I try to think of some way to respond. I, I'd say the chances are high enough. He shudders and makes some exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, Hisao. Me? I don't think I can trust the chances. Oh, man. <laughs> he may have tuned to video, guys. Uh, the only one I trust is myself. Oh, I missed the chance to do it. Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? He thinks about this for a while. A wise decision. Darn. You're smarter than you look. Probably. What do you look like? I hope not smart. He squints his eyes and leans closer again, but I lean backwards to dodge it. Never mind, it doesn't matter. With that, he turns, fumbles around for a moment in search of the door handle and shuts the door behind him. I slide the key into the lock of the door mark 119. Bleak beige, wa beige walls, white linen, a desk made of some type of light wood. Ugly curtains. It's no one's room, impersonal, like my hospital room was. My bags are sitting at the foot of my bed, looking a lot emptier than they did this morning. The closet is sitting open, stocked with my clothes. Also, it seems there are a number of school uniforms hanging there as well. Just gotta make of it what you will, man. I notice pinned to the sleeve of one of the shirts. Hi, he chan We've unpacked your things and made your bed. They said that if these don't fit, then you should go to the office tomorrow. If you have any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mom and Dad. Kasan Otosan. Wait, they call him Hee-chan? Well, at least I don't have to worry about unpacking. I kind of hoped I would have, then there would have been something to do. It's still too early. Hi-yi. I put the note down on the desktop 
and lie down on the bed feeling drained. Lying there makes me want to read something, but I have nothing with me. I wonder if the hospital conditioned for me wanting to read whenever I have nothing to do. The restless urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Maybe it's stress or something. I was pretty nervous about it before coming and for the entire day today. Wait, and for the entire day today too. I still am, I think. Darn, I have to distract myself somehow, so I won't be this unnatural all the time. Tomorrow I'll go back I'll go borrow some books from the library. Yeah, I'll do that. But for now, the bottles of medication neatly arranged on my night table catch my eye. I pick one I pick up one and shake it just to hear the contents right on side and then read the glued on pharmacy label. Hisanakai. Two tablets daily to stay alive. What kind of description is that? Two tablets daily to stay alive. What? And first of all, to stay, okay, hold on, hold on, to stay alive. First of all, he hadn't suffered from this experience. I assume they're high school students. He hasn't suffered from his condition until high school. Second, he was strong enough, he was deemed strong enough to, you know, just carry on with his normal life, of course, as long as he's taking his medication. Two tablets to stay alive? To just dis disregard the fact that that's a very bogus statement. Oh. You made me disgust this dude. Hey, Sal, you suck. Anyways, it doesn't really say that, but it could just as well. It's kind of twisting having your life depend on chemicals like this. I resent it a little, but what choice do I have? With the sigh, I begin my new daily ritual of taking the right number of pills from each bottle, being careful to check the correct dosages. I lie down again, feeling hollow and uncertain, and after that I keep staring at the blank, unfamiliar ceiling for a long time. It doesn't start looking any more familiar, not even after darkness falls and long shadows draw across my room like fingers. The sheets feel slightly more comfortable, warm, and nest-like against the chill that passes for room temperature here. Soon, the lighter shade of the darkness that is the ceiling looks like every ceiling does at night, and it becomes the only thing I recognize anymore. The night beckons me to sleep, and I feel the coldness of unfamiliarity and fear creeping up my spine once again. I keep drifting further away from the world I knew. Oh, that's a pretty good kind of transition. I wake up in a strange room. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry, morning, solid morning light shimmers against the light gray ceiling. I have forgotten to draw the curtains closed last night. <laughs> this is my room, isn't it? My room. Watashi no heya. This is the third room this year that I am supposed to call mine. Watashi. Watashi no. Various things around here remind me that indeed it's me who is supposed to be the one living here. My bags on the floor, my new school books on the desk, my numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottles for a moment, deliberating until I open a bottle, shake out a pill, and pop out a tablet from a full sheet. I down them with a chaser of water without thinking about the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. I slink out from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Putting on a new school uniform feels like I'm dressing like dressing in someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose, but the feeling of fresh cloth against my back is a good one. A natural one. It feels like a school uniform, as it should. It's not much different from what I used to wear before. That goes for other things, too. So far, this place seems more or less like a normal school. Except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday. Misha's constant laughter and Shizune's sweeping sign language gestures. Well, I've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't that normal, but I'm sure others are. Or perhaps people like them are what pass, passes for normal around here? Yeah, what does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I didn't see a lot of kids hanging around after classes yesterday, so maybe there are clubs. If so, I wonder if I should join, it, well, should join one. All through class, the questions remain in my mind, so I decided to ask Zune about it when we split into groups. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. She crosses her arms and shifts her gaze slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser of her pencil down so that the top is perfectly and evenly flat. <laughs> Shizune is like, pay attention, woman. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Sorry, sorry, Shi-chan. Is there something you wanted from me? Oh, I see. Hmm, that's a good question, He-chan. 
My first thought is that means she doesn't know, which is worrying. Maybe I'm being too negative. Well, anyway, Misha, please don't prove me wrong. Right. Oh, that's right. Everyone is encouraged to join a club. A lot of people do so because there isn't really anything else to do. There are also school events like the festival coming up in a few days. Almost every student in the school tends to help out with it, doing whatever. So, you actually transferred it at a busy time. Maybe you can help out too. Sure. What's the festival about? Misha freezes. <laughs> I don't know, Hee-chan. The truth is that it's a local event and I'm not from this area, so... She starts signing desperately to Shizune, asking her to bail her out. <laughs> Shizune adjusts her glasses at the end of an oddly grandiose florist and starts signing hard and heavy. Huh? Oh. Who cares? <laughs> what? Misha puffs out her chest as she shouts Shizune words at me with a disproportionate amount of pride. Too loud. I can see heads turning and looking in our direction. Not so loud. Human beings evolve with each new generation. The ideals and beliefs behind a festival inevitably be changed with the time. Now it's about delicious fried food and amazing little games that you play to win prizes. <laughs> the teacher clears his throat very loudly, batting his long wooden pointer against his other palms like a baton. He shoots a pointed gaze at us. Finally noticing where we are, Misha stifles a yelp and quickly quads down. Shizune doesn't seem embarrassed at all, though, brushing it off without a care. We are in the middle of class and should start working. That's right, Shi Chen. <laughs> what? That's right. He Chen, are you asking because you're interested in joining a club? Oh, what? That face, though? <laughs> that face. <laughs> oh my gosh. It could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, but I think I saw a suspicious glance exchanged between them. Misha's tone had also changed, although it does that every other word anyway. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Misha and Jizune look at each other again. I'm about to ask what they have in mind when something dark flares in my peripheral vision, catching my attention. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the girl with long dark hair get up from her desk and slip silently towards the door. It doesn't seem like she's working in any group and no one seems to notice her but me. I glance at the teacher who's also looking at the dark haired girl go, Why doesn't he say anything? He chan is something wrong? Do I look as uneasy as I feel? Or was Misha just looking at me like looking after the girl who left? No, nothing. Okay, well, like we were asking, you don't have any plans for lunch today, do you? I thought I would go to the library and pick up some books. Uh, not really. Do you want to have lunch together then? Sure. Yay! <laughs> okay, he champ. Perfect. The rest of the class passes uneventfully. The girl with the long hair never came back. I think I'm going to leave it on, leave it on this cliffhanger, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I will definitely keep on going through this. Uh, if you like it, leave a comment. And below, I can't English right now. If you like this, leave a comment down below. And maybe two. You, too, can chuny be like me. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Now my heart's broke. Now my heart's broke.